Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Zaid's Experience. So today is going to be a day in the life of a carnivore. So basically, all I'm going to go through all my three meals that I usually eat. If I was working out, it'd normally be around four. So come with me and check out what I eat in a day. <sighs> Now it's about seven o'clock in the morning and I need to get some breakfast in me because I am super, super hungry. So right now what I'm gonna be cooking is gonna be some ground beef, just salt and pepper, just very straight up. I'm also gonna be having it with a couple of pieces of chicken that I barbecued. So that's gonna be my breakfast. So in the mornings I do try to eat a little bit more, that way I'm ready for my entire day and right now I have about half a pound in my plate and I have about a pound of chicken or actually half a pound as well of chicken. It's just two big thighs and that's it. Again the chicken is also good quality, that one I got a little bit of a compromise on because I just wanted some really good quality chicken so it was a little bit more expensive, it was like uh, $3.99 for the entire like pound, which isn't terrible, but for chicken, it starts to get a little more expensive. It's, it's going into the price of meat, but still it's organic, not hormones, and um, it's actually grass fed. And there you go, guys. Meal one is ready to go. And this will pump me up for the rest of the day. Or at least until my second meal around two to three o'clock. One of the nice things about being carnivore is that you take away a lot of the decision that comes into, oh, what am I gonna eat today? Um, do I need to buy this? Do I need to buy that? No, it's pretty straightforward. You just buy basically protein all the time, you know? Red meats, good quality chicken, no antibiotics, no estrogen, all that stuff. Just, just good chicken. If it's gonna be chicken, good quality chicken. Eggs, same thing. And pig, I think pork is like the one thing that I'm super, super like, uh, picky about especially after getting my half a pig everything try to get good quality with red meat I'm the most lenient with because I know it's a little bit more expensive but at the same time it's like the one thing where uh, we can play around a little bit and it doesn't impact you as much fish I'm the same way with fish I I am super super picky with the fish that I eat so trust me guys when I say I don't take my food for granted that's like the one thing that I really hyper focus on Okay guys, so I just got home from work and what I'm gonna be doing is um, this is like around my 1 to 2 o'clock food that I normally eat and it's gonna be some eggs with bacon. I usually like to do this all the time. It's either in the morning or right after I come from work. So right now it's like 2 o'clock-ish. So I'm gonna be having that right before I do, let's say, if I was working out the way I used to work out, this is what I would eat right before going to work out and killing it, <laughs> or trying to. And this is the meal that I would have. So what I will have is about four to five eggs and some bacon with it. I'll have quite a bit of bacon strips, but right now I am cooking for me and my girlfriend, so I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be cooking around nine eggs. I'm gonna be whisking them all together, and I'm gonna be doing it with bacon. I'm also gonna be adding a couple of red chili peppers. I know a lot of people are super, super restrictive, and if you guys are trying to figure out what kind of works for you and what doesn't, I wouldn't recommend doing this right off the bat. Try it out, just plain old carnivore, you know. Um, maybe eliminate the dairy and keep the eggs in, keep the red meat in, keep some of the other good fats in there. But try maybe taking out like all the nightshades. I know peppers are a nightshade, but I know that it doesn't cost me a problem at all. I tried it with and without um, for a very long time and this is just something that I normally do to spice things up and I really, really like it and it makes it feel like I'm eating something completely different. We got the bacon right there, we got the eggs, and we got the peppers. I took out the seeds and cut them up. That's why I was tapping them, that way I can get all the seeds out and then just chop them up in two or three pieces and all the seeds come out straight up super quickly.
for like about a minute or so. I like to leave it in here for about a minute. That way with the flavor of the actual peppers gets trapped in all the grease from the bacon. And this is some pretty good quality bacon, so I'm totally okay with it. Once that's good, pour this next thing. Oh, I totally messed that up. is I don't like to stop stirring it until it's completely done because at this point it should only be like about a minute or two before it's fully cooked. A lot of people overcooked, overcook their eggs and I like to leave them at a point where they're, it's kind of creamy. So as you can see it shouldn't take more than two to two minutes at the most if that. I, I would say even a minute, minute 20 and I'm pushing it. It was almost ready. Take it off the fire, and this is good guys. Some good old scrambled eggs with bacon and a couple of pieces of pepper. And that looks ready to go for me guys. So we are here at my kitchen guys. Right now it's 5.11. And I'm going to be showing you what I cooked for today. So today I took out some tri-tip. I really wanted to eat some tri-tip and I wanted to take some for lunch. So what I did is I cooked two giant pieces of tri-tip. That way I would have enough for today's dinner for me and my girlfriend and have some left over for tomorrow and just take it in a Tupperware, take a quarter of it or a third of it over for lunch tomorrow at work. Today is a Friday, so I decided to put a couple of spices just to make it a little bit better. Put some cayenne pepper on it, some smoked paprika, some cumin, salt and pepper, and that's about it. So let me show you. I cooked this piece of tri-tip. You guys have seen this recipe by now probably. If not, I'll go ahead and leave a link up here. That way you guys know how to cook it, but it's the exact same thing. I love making it this way. It's super simple and it really breaks the habit of just putting salt and pepper on just your regular steak. If, you, if you're feeling that your diet might be getting a little mundane, this is a good way. Spices are always the perfect way to spice things up. So, so this is one of the pieces only. I took out the other one. This one, I'm, I've been letting it rest for some time. But here, Willie, just trying to get to it. So I'll leave that one in there. That's the one I'm gonna cut up for tomorrow. But this is the one for today. Look at that beauty. So for tri-tip, I like to cut against the grain. That way it makes the pieces a lot easier to chew Look at that. This is awesome guys, look. I know it's a little bit more cooked than usual, but trust me, it doesn't deter from the great flavor that it has. Right, Willie? Boy, you're waiting for a piece, aren't you? Wakashi, Willie, wakashi, wakashi, wakashi. <laughs> He's waiting for his piece right now. He knows that if he waits quietly, he'll get something. But I don't think he likes smoked paprika. And besides, he ate a bunch already. He's just being... He's just being a beggar. When you just being a beggar right now, Willie? I also wanted to do some sausages. <laughs> Willie has been a good, quiet boy and he has been waiting. You want a piece, Willie? Willie, Willie. He knows not to cry, because if he cries, he doesn't get anything. So come on here to your plate. Sentaito? Sentaito, Willie? There you go, good boy. If he wants it, he'll hit it with his hand. If he wants it, he'll hit it with his hand. Yeah, he wants it. Go for it, boy. Time to Willie? Oh, he's camera shy, yeah. I guess he is camera shy. The thing that's crazy, his hair, I would just go like this on his back and his hair would fall off. Even though I was getting him some good 
food, you know, whatever the great food that they have. You know, I know Merrick isn't a bad cat food at all. And I was giving it to him and what do you know? His hair was still falling off and everything else. So at least I know my cat was designed to be a meteor. Bakashi, what you bakashi? Now, before we continue, there's two things I want to say. For those people that say that carnivore is expensive, it can be. It can definitely be. This was an entire piece of tri-tip. But, just like I told you guys, you definitely have to go special hunting. This piece of tri-tip ended up being $2.98 a pound. So for the entire piece of tri-tip, it was about 10 bucks. 10 bucks, I know most people spend in their lunch breaks at work. So, this fed me and my girlfriend, and there's still some left over. And this is this is quality food guys. I mean it might not be the best quality meat, but grab what you can afford. At the end of the day, it really is all about that. It's what you can afford. You know, try to go for the best, don't aim the lowest, you know, try to try to make it decent, try to make an educated choice. For the second thing that I wanted to say, that is not blood. I know people would say, oh that's still raw, look at all that blood. No, this comes from the smoke paprika that I use. That's one. That's where all the, the like massive redness comes from. And second, you can see that this is pretty well cooked throughout, really well. And also the red stuff is the liquid that comes out after you let it rest. So when I cut this all up, all the juices and everything came from the inside and the red that does come out if let's say I didn't use any smoked paprika or any red kind of colorant per se, would be the hemoglobin coming from the actual food and that's why it's red that's why when people say oh my steak is bloody no a lot of times it isn't bloody granted there's some people that might undercook it and you could get a bloody steak but if it is properly cooked by somebody that does know what they're doing and you see the red liquid come out that is not fully red but almost looks like blood and I like to call it liquid gold because this makes it any steak any steak taste awesome We're just about ready. Now, doesn't that play look a lot better now? So it is about 6.40 right now p.m. and I think this is gonna be our last meal. We definitely don't wanna eat anymore. I wasn't able to finish all the food, so all the food that we weren't able to finish, we are gonna put over for lunch for me tomorrow. And I still have that giant piece of tri-tip, so I can definitely do some stuff with that in the morning before going to work or even in the afternoon, just munching on it for a little while if I don't wanna make any more food in the afternoon. But that is it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Saints Experience. If you guys like this video, please go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the deal. Push that notification bell if you guys haven't already done so. That way you guys get notified every time I come up with a video such as this. If you're wondering why I have headphones on, it's because I'm editing another video that I'm making for you guys. So stay tuned for that. But in any case, guys, it's time for me to take off and continue editing. Get some good coffee in me. And Zay. Out. Yeah. Peace.